Zoro is by far the best character in One Piece, in my opinion. And not because he's a badass swordsman that can whoop everyone's ass. I'm not a part of that crazy Zoro fan base that loves Zoro so much. No, it's honestly because he has some of the most personality and development out of any character. Which is weird, I know, trust me, I could hear you typing your comments, but just hear me out for this video, okay? Zoro is the stoic and strong character that's been here since the beginning, and we still don't know his backstory after 20 years. But I still think he's one of the best written characters. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't make sense, but I will try my best to translate my point of view to you guys. Honestly, there's probably going to be a lot of hot takes from me in this video that you may not agree with, and I'm curious to know what everyone thinks, so leave some comments down below and like the video, and also before I get started, hit that subscribe button. Alright, I want to start off with Zoro's strength, because I think his strength in the show is very off and on. It seems like Zoro is really only as strong as Oda needs him to be, and this happens a lot with characters who are second in line to the main character, because obviously you don't want them to be stronger than the main character, but you also need to write them to have these good fight scenes and stuff that makes them seem strong. And if you ask me who the second person in command in the Straw Hat crew is, it's 100% Zoro. And there's people that argue for Sanji, but they are just not on the same level. Even though a lot of other Straw Hats seem to have way more screen time than Zoro, I still think he's the second guy. And that leads me to my first point. I think at the beginning of One Piece, Zoro is stronger than Luffy. So when Luffy is first recruiting Zoro to his crew, I think at that point, Zoro is stronger than Luffy. And you can't really have a new member joining the crew and be stronger than the main character and captain. And while there's not really enough content in the first 20 episodes to really tell that Zoro is stronger than Luffy, I still think he is. And I think this because within these first 20 episodes, Zoro has to get nerfed. And by nerfed, I'm talking about the fight with Mihawk. Realistically, what is Mihawk doing at the Baratie at this time? Yeah, he had beef with Don Krieg, but Don Krieg's crew was obviously no match for Mihawk, so why did he go through the trouble of following them? It really doesn't make that much sense when you think about it. And I think Mihawk was kind of introduced here so the show could have this ominous, overpowered character introduced, because at this point there really wasn't anything like that. But I think a main reason Mihawk was at the Baratie was to nerf Zoro and make him weaker. Zoro got humbled badly by Mihawk, basically losing to the equivalent of a butter knife. So this hurts his morale, his motivation is hurt, and also remember the massive scar that Mihawk cut into his chest. I don't care what you say, I think Zoro got nerfed here so he wasn't stronger than Luffy. So for the next couple months, he has this cut that needs to heal and he's constantly fighting other people reopening this cut. And you know Oda wanted to put emphasis on this cut because it's mentioned in the next arc at Arlong Park. Arlong is holding Zoro up and he sees this cut across his chest and he almost gets afraid. He wonders how Zoro is still this fierce of a fighter even after being so bruised and battered. This scar from Mihawk becomes a symbol of Zoro's character because it's proof of his only loss to another swordsman. Obviously scars don't just disappear but Zoro's scar is still there today as a reminder and motivator that Zoro has not yet achieved his dream of becoming the world's strongest swordsman. Moving on to a less serious trope of Zoro's character, the big brother vibes that he has. It kind of makes sense because he is the most serious out of the crew but a lot of the time shows give more of a dad persona to this character and I would argue that Zoro gives off big brother vibes over dad vibes. And I think this only starts after Chopper joins the crew because Chopper is the little brother to Zoro's big brother. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of moments where you actually see this relationship in the show. At one point during Skypea, we see Zoro save Chopper in the air. Chopper. In Long Green Long Land, we see him save Chopper from drowning. Chopper, look out! <laughs> the basic barrels and the swordfish king boats have been sunk. They're officially disqualified. Are you okay? They're really stuck. Thank you, Zoro. And Wano Zoro says, "You won't die, right?" To Chopper. <laughs> Mochiro, 
And you could argue that he would do this for all the other crew members, but we just don't know if he would for a fact. It makes sense Zoro and Chopper are so close because Chopper is always treating Zoro's injuries because it seems like he gets injured the most. Then there's a polar opposite sibling relationship with Zoro and Sanji. It's the equivalent of twins always thinking they have to be better than the other at everything they do. Oddly enough, Long Ring Long Land has another great moment between the two because they finally decide to work together to defeat the groggy monsters. So Zoro gives off this big brother persona and I have a theory as to why Zoro's sibling relationship is more prominent in his character compared to other straw hats. And this theory relates to his backstory. You're probably like what backstory? Well, from the few flashbacks and episodes we've seen it looks like Zoro does not have much of a family. He basically lived at that sword dojo he was training at. So I think these family type relationships that he's shown to have are because he never truly had a family to begin with. And this is Oda's way of showing that now. This theory does make sense. However, you could apply it to other Straw Hats and it kind of contrasts the theory because they also didn't have families, but then they don't have these attributes as much as Zoro has them. And also, we just don't know his backstory, so it's difficult to make assumptions about why he acts the way he acts. We know why Nami loves money because she was forced into slavery to get money. We know why Sanji won't hit a lady, and we know why Luffy and the others act the way they do. But with Zoro, we don't know his backstory, so we don't really know why he acts the way he does. Jumping to another reason why I love Zoro's character is his comedic relief. Zoro's not meant to be a funny character, and he never tries to be funny, but he is still able to provide comedic moments due to just pure genius writing from Oda. One of my favorite examples of this is in the Saba ODR. Zoro was minding his own business, walking down the street when he comes face to face with the Celestial Dragon, and I'll let the scene speak for itself. Hey, what's the matter? Do you need some directions or something? While his comedic relief is an amazing quality, I want to end off with some of my favorite qualities from Zoro, which are his loyalty, discipline, and honor. Zoro's loyalty to Luffy changes over time. At first, he joins the crew to chase his own dream of becoming the world's strongest swordsman. Zoro's dream is first. He made that clear, and Luffy's is second. However, at some point during the series, that switches, and Zoro becomes fully devoted to helping Luffy become the Pirate King first and putting his goal second. There's no real spot where we see the switch. Shoulder Bark might be the best example, but even so, if Zoro is willing to take all of Luffy's pain in order to save him, that means that switch has already happened. Zoro wouldn't have done that if he was not fully devoted to Luffy at that time. It was a gradual change over time, but we were able to see it. The switch of him wanting to achieve his dream first to putting Luffy's dream above his. Luffy and Zoro's relationship is written so good, it's hard to put into words. Luffy doesn't listen to many people. We can all tell that by watching the show. But when Zoro is serious, Luffy will listen to his advice and sometimes almost take an order from Zoro like he's the captain. We saw this when Zoro said Usopp has to say sorry before joining the crew again, and also in Punk Hazard when Zoro told Luffy to quit screwing around. Luffy's entire attitude changed after Zoro said these things, and it shows the mutual respect that they have for each other. I feel like I've said everything is Zoro's best attribute, but I think the actual best attribute of Zoro's character is his altruistic personality. He is one of the most selfless characters in One Piece, and I think that's why so many people love his character. And because he's so selfless, I think that Zoro's dream of becoming the world's strongest swordsman is not just a dream for himself. It is partly for himself, yes, but it was also for his childhood best friend, Kuina. I think a big reason why Zoro wants to become the world's greatest swordsman is for Kuina, and not mainly for himself. Because if you think about it, Zoro and Kuina's relationship is very similar to Luffy, Ace, and Saba when they were growing up. This was Zoro's only true friend as a kid, and he probably saw her as a sister, so it makes sense why he would want to accomplish this dream for her. Overall, I think Zoro's character is much deeper than a lot of people see, and hopefully I did a good job putting in perspective his character and what makes it so special. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.